So next up, we have Garrett Kinsman, who is the head of Nodal, founder of Nodal, co-founder, correct, of Nodal, which is a super cool uh, smartphone-powered network um, that is being built on the Polkadot, one of the Polkadot parachains. So super interesting. And Garrett's going to be talking to us a bit today about fighting AI-generated content. And uh, he's got a presentation for us. It's going to be super interesting, very hot topic. Um, so take it away. Thank you. Uh, very interesting stuff that we're seeing, be it terabytes of data, of GIS data for free, or uh, doing decentralized uh, databases. The decentralized database stuff is actually really interesting. This, this is going to empower a lot of cool projects. So we're pretty excited about this. What's really crazy, though, is that in this world of data, uh, we're going to be flooded with information. And a lot of this information is going to start to be AI generated, and we're not going to know what's real or what's fake anymore. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, is fighting AI generated content using decentralized technologies. So a lot of you probably have seen this image here. This is a photo of the Pope. Uh, which made its rounds on the news uh, maybe two weeks ago, and it's 100% generated with AI. Uh, a lot of us on the internet have seen AI-generated photos for a long time, but this was the one that really made it mainstream, what made regular people at home say, wow, I can't tell the difference between an AI-generated photo and a real one. So we're now in a world where AI-generated media is becoming superhuman. If you want to have an AI generate hundreds of terabytes of fake mapping data or social media images, now it can do that. And it can do it in a matter of hours. Now, the impact of this is that in a world where we're flooded with, with AI-generated media, it actually degrades the value of original content. This here is a photo that I generated with Midjourney in just a few minutes. Uh, we were actually uh, uh, look, talking to camera companies about how can you protect uh, original content when you can just imagine original content. And this is really important because photography historically has defined our interpretation of history. If we look back on the past hundreds of years, we think of that in images. Here's a photo of JFK on Mars. And when this media is altered, that changes our perception of history. So if we think about our children, how are they going to look back and know what's real? when our world is flooded with AI-generated images. This is a photo of people discovering hieroglyphics on the surface of Mars. Uh, it looks real. It would be really hard to tell it's fake, and this technology is only going to get better. And so when we think about history in the past 100 years, uh, we have to make sure that we can protect that and protect that going forward. This is a bit controversial today because no matter what your political views are, unverifiable content and unverifiable media have defined modern history. And these technologies are only becoming more available to everybody. Uh, it's accelerating and commoditizing this trend. This is a photo that I generated with AI, by the way. So the need for this verifiable media is now. We have to do something now, and a lot of people would argue that we should have done something many, many years ago. And that's why we've joined the Content Authenticity Initiative. This is an initiative led by Adobe and now hundreds of other companies that connects content creators, be it camera manufacturers or writers, and links that with news publications. So that when you take a picture, you can verify that that picture is authentic. And when you're reading that online in the New York Times or on Reuters, there's a digital record so how this works is that when the camera takes a photo, that image is signed cryptographically by the camera. And there's a certificate proof that shows that the, the, the camera was authentic and, and made by the manufacturer. Now that picture is then attested. And it's technically called a C2PA attestation. But you can just think of it as a, a media attestation. It's a little piece of metadata that goes along with the image that says, this was taken by this camera. Now, if that image is modified in any way, here I added some more fire and, and destruction uh, to make it a little more newsworthy, then the signatures won't match up. So we can actually do a reverse image of this search that we find on Twitter or on media and, and say that, hey, there's actually an original 
this original is tied back to this camera made by this manufacturer and it doesn't match up. We think this is gonna be really important and this is the technology that uh, Adobe and so many others are working on with the content authenticity initiative. Now, what about censorship? The technology that they've built relies on centralized certificate authorities. And in a world of censorship where the New York Times, for example, isn't, modified, isn't accessible in many parts of the world, or you're trusting a certificate authority, I think we all know there can be some issues with certificate authorities. So what we do is we then mint that photo as a verifiable NFT. So during the process of taking that picture, we can attest it, sign it, push it as an NFT, and we can begin to decentralize these roots of trust. And this is the app that we've launched, uh, the Nodal app, which allows people to start taking uh, photographs and photo NFTs, and we're in the process now of implementing this CAI standard in the attestations. And so we think this is the beginning of something that right now is a lot of fun and soon has a lot of implications. So how this works is that when the camera would take a photo, we attach that attestation, we sign the image and say it was, it was taken uh, by this person and done in the way that's based on this uh, CAI format. We then push this media into IPFS. And in IPFS, we return the CID. This is the content identifier of the image. We then can attach other metadata about that image. We originally started out as a Bluetooth network, so we're looking now at actually recording interactions between phones, creating a digital proof like a PO app, and then attaching that as a piece of metadata to the image. So we can begin to attach all kinds of other proofs uh, to this image to ensure that it was authentic and that it was taken at a specific date and time. We then take this package, push that to IPFS, and push the CID of that onto our chain, and we mint that as an NFT. And we do this all with just a click of a button. So regular people don't have to understand crypto, don't have to understand a wallet. They can just take a photo, mint it as an NFT, and start using it that way. Oh, there were a few more slides, uh, but that's my presentation. Um, we think that this is really exciting because a lot of companies and a lot of enterprises are really beginning to have the need for these AI-generated images. So think insurance, think all other kinds of uh, businesses that really need this stuff. So we're excited to launch this technology, and yeah, that's it. But uh, try it out with a Nodal app. Uh, we're beginning to now just launch the idea to mint uh, a photo NFT with your, your camera. Uh, we're going to be supporting the, sta the CAI standard in the next uh, couple of weeks. So that means that all of the cameras that have announced support for this technology, Canon, Leica, Nikon, uh, will now be supporting these formats and you can mint a photo taken on these cameras directly to our chain. So there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up and I encourage you guys to check out the, uh, the Nodal app uh, because it's uh, really an exciting future that we're entering into and we're going to need these types of technologies too protect us. So thank you very much. Cool. And then um, so we're a little bit ahead of schedule here. So maybe it might be helpful if you kind of went into just describing a bit more about what Nodal is and, and the network that you guys are building, uh, just so we can kind of have some broader context around all of this. I think we've got, we've got some time to do that as well. Sure. Take a couple questions if folks have some. So. Sure. So Nodal originally started as a company doing distributed Bluetooth networks. So think of like your Apple AirTag or your, uh, your Find My Phone service. We were one of the, the companies that actually pioneered this technology. And so we started Nodal as a company that rewarded people for running a, a Bluetooth node and being rewarded in cryptocurrency for creating coverage. We would then use those Bluetooth nodes to connect assets. So think insurance assets tagged with a Bluetooth tag. Uh, what we've moved into now is realizing that the smartphone is a super powerful supercomputer. It's got Bluetooth, it's got cameras, all kinds of very powerful sensors. And we realized that if we distilled everything that we're trying to do, it's really about verifying reality. It's about connecting the phone, the digital world, and interacting with the physical world and making that programmable. And so we introduced the concept of a smart mission. A smart mission is taking uh, a programmable interface with reality and allowing developers to build on that. 
So the first smart missions that we're launching are Bluetooth-based, so put a Bluetooth tag on a shipping pallet and be able to track it, and use a distributed network of millions of phones to do that. Now one of the, the fundamentals, uh, the, the building blocks of these smart missions is Bluetooth, but it's also photo NFTs. So we believe that how encouraging and incentivizing users to go to a specific region, snap a photo, uh, can create a lot of value, be it checking the price of gas or actually looking for a lost shipping pallet or a scooter. And so we're building these kind of programmable functions into a swarm of millions of phones, and we think that that can get really exciting. Uh, so we've progressed from just focusing on Bluetooth, now making smartphones themselves programmable, and then building the, the fundamentals and the building blocks so that people can build really cool applications on top of that. And photo NFTs are one of those, uh, those really key and important uh, building blocks. Oh, you found the slides? It's okay, that was pretty much it. Uh, we had one question off in the back. Hey, so I have a quick question about, uh, I think uh, you're, uh, it's very exciting to, to try and be working on decentralized alternatives to a, a, a certificate authority model, but it sounds like the CAI system, you still depend on that certification to uh, make the uh, attestation that the photograph is, is, is legitimate. So. Uh, maybe you can go into a little bit about how the attestation could be more decentralized in, in your system. Like, are you, for instance, adding the Bluetooth kind of um, idea or anything? So for, for now, we're, we're using the, the whole C2PA attestation requires a certificate authority on the side of the camera uh, to make it work. So it relies on saying Leica has a certificate, this is put on the camera, and this camera is authentic. Now, obviously, this can be attacked. So what we're doing is we're relying on an HSM that's on the phone. So at least we can tie that back or add another attestation that says we, we're pretty sure this Leica is real. Even if it's not real, we can have a user sign uh, and ideally use the phone for that. Uh, so that way we have a second signature that we can tie that back to an original person. And we say maybe this is a photojournalist. Uh, maybe this is somebody important that has some precedence, and at least we can tie all of these images that were taken back to an individual artist or person. Um, now, making that link between an, uh, an SLR or a mirrorless camera and a person right now is a little difficult, but by doing all of this within the phone, uh, you can have that, that kind of uh, certificate chain and be able to trust that pretty reliably. Um, I imagine in the future you're actually going to get signed data right off of the, uh, the sensor. We're not quite there yet, um, but the, the short answer is we, we would add an attestation uh, that's signed directly by the user, and we're in discussion now with uh, the, the CAI, uh, the initiative on how we can have decentralized routes of trust, um, which is something that we spent a lot of time thinking about for IoT devices as well, um, but it, it's a little tricky to implement and, and to do it well. Yeah, good question. Cool. Well, did you want to go over your, the, 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 the found slides? Sure. Have they been discovered? So this is an example of, a, of what a photo NFT would look like. This is actually my co-founder in Hong Kong. And these photos were taken almost 10 years ago. Uh, and this was actually what inspired us to start building Bluetooth networks and to start looking at verifiable images because there were so many people around using this app that we had built called FireChat, which was a messaging app, that we said we could just make a network work with phones. We don't need to have the internet. We could just use the people around us running the app to move IoT data or to verify that uh, you are standing within a mesh network. And this really harkens back to the original days of film. I grew up in, in Rochester, New York, where uh, Kodak was basically founded, and people would hoard this film. They were so excited about this, this Kodachrome that you would open up freezers and they would just be filled with film. And that's because there was an intimate connection with, with film. And you lost that in the world of digital. This was the, one of the first consumer digital cameras, uh, and actually my first digital camera, and it became commoditized. 
you could click a million photos and it wouldn't really mean anything. Uh, you didn't have that intimate connection. And with social media, in many cases, you actually lost that right to use the photo. When you upload your photo to many popular social media networks, technically and legally, they own that content. And they can do whatever they want with it. Now with AI-generated images, they can generate as many images as they want. You can essentially imagine whatever content is perfect for you. We're, we're quickly moving into a world where advertising and media and content will be specifically tailored for you. And this can be very dangerous. Now with photo NFTs, we hearken back to that original day of film, back to where each photo is unique and authentic and special uh, because it costs something, you have to pay for it. Uh, and we think that that can be really exciting. So now we're starting to get photographers and journalists and beginning to have discussions, so please try it out. And if you have any ideas on how to use this technology, we'd love to chat. So, thank you. Thank you.